And so uh, we'll figure out how things get timed out in the end, but uh, definitely we'll have uh, um, our budget um, subcommittee closeouts here this week, and we'll have the budget on the floor here probably uh, very soon, probably at the beginning of March. Austin Baird from KTUU. Um, Probably uh, Representative Taka, but whoever wants it. What What is the single biggest cut that's been identified in the subcommittee process? And what do you say to members of the minority who are upset that they've not had a more active role in the amendment process so far? Well, we have um, budget subcommittees. The ideas are still coming forward, so I don't know what the biggest cut is going to be. I have no idea yet. Um, I can tell you that from Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, we did uh, cut uh, roughly, I think it was $230,000 from what the um, Governor's Administration wanted to see for uh, uh, developing rural Alaska and having uh, um, uh, uh, more of uh, Alaska militia involvement out there for community development and everything else. So that was a big cut that uh, unfortunately we saw a need for that we had to um, uh, not take the governor's number on that. Um, as far as the other budget subcommittees, I have no idea. Those are going to be closing out this week. Um, but we also have a lot of policy changes that are taking place as well um, that we'll see forward. So, um, you know, I got to tell you, we have a much better process this year than we've had in the years past of making sure that everybody gets uh, an opportunity to weigh in on the um, um, budget subcommittees. In the past, it was pretty much the, um, the chairs of the budget subcommittees dictated what was going to be happening, what wasn't going to be, what wasn't going to be happening. And this year, I see, I hear a lot of dialogue. At least the two budget subcommittees that I was serving on that just closed out, there was a lot of dialogue uh, taking place. So that's where we come up with great ideas on how we can change policies to save our budget and where we need to cut. Shauna Crandall, Alaska Education Update. I have a question for Representative Ortez. Can you talk about what the um, Senate Finance Subcommittee for Education is working on and, and just what you've been doing in that committee? You mean the House Finance Subcommittee? Sorry, House Finance. You bet. Uh, <coughs> we, you know, to echo a little bit of what, what Representative Tuck just spoke about, we have been having some excellent dialogue, excellent presentations from different uh, departments uh, with Indeed. Um, ideas have come forward from all members of my committee as to uh, potential changes in the operating budget. Um, and so the dialogue's there. We're looking at uh, potential proposals to um, perhaps reduce funding for um, you know, preschool programs, et cetera. I know that that's one of the proposals that's been put forward. Um, I do know uh, that there's been some other areas of suggested re reductions as well. Um, we haven't actually come to the votes on those particular proposals, um, but the proposals have been, come for have been coming forward. Uh, we certainly haven't limited anybody's ability to uh, bring forward potential changes, uh, adjustments in the budget, and uh, now we're just in the process of, um, of addressing those and uh, I think in this upcoming meeting, uh, we may actually have, after some public testimony, further public testimony, we may actually have uh, some, some, some votes on those. Yes, yeah, so Representative Guerra. Uh, just briefly, I, I, I know your question, your, the couple, last couple questions have been on cuts. I feel like some people in this building are like a cat that runs to a room like it's never been there before. There have been $3 billion worth of cuts so far. Um, Every $100 million more will cost 1,000 to 1,500 jobs. We certainly have to look for waste. We certainly have to look for efficiencies. But to the extent everybody wants to be the sort of this cat that, that, that runs to a room like it's never been there before, there have been $3 billion worth of cuts. That's part of the reason we're in a recession. That's part of the reason we lost 9,000 jobs last year. So if everybody's going to say, hey, uh, find another billion dollars worth of cuts, just you're going to live in a state with fewer workers. You're going to live in a state with a recession that probably lives the last 10 <clears> years. Um, I, we can keep playing this game, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not thrilled to do it. And I'd like to add what Representative Ortiz said earlier about uh, we, when we do these budget cuts, we've got to make sure we're not shooting ourselves in the foot. And uh, I know there's some proposals coming forward, eliminating pre-K, eliminating parents as teachers, eliminating best beginnings. 
that's shooting ourselves in the foot. Those investments pay dividends way down the road as far as uh, uh, higher graduation rates, um, uh, pursuit of higher education after high school, um, having successful learning careers uh, through the K through 12 system, uh, keeping parents involved, which is a key factor in, uh, in uh, making public education successful. So we have to ask ourselves, what kind of Alaska do we want to live in? What do we want to have? And so we've got to be smart in the decisions that we made and not just do nilly-willy cuts just for the purposes of, of doing cuts. We've got to make sure that we get smart returns on smart investments and that we continue looking at uh, ways that we cut the fat, ways that we uh, uh, get rid of um, duplicating services, and that's what we're committed to do. Um, if I may jump in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a throat thing going on. Um, to touch on that note, you can be penny wise and pound foolish. And, and cuts, are, are, cuts are needed, efficiencies are needed, but look, look at Department of Revenue. I sit on that budget subcommittee, and we talked about this last year, and this year we're actually doing something about it, and that is auditors. And we, we added, we put a proposal in to be looked at to add two more auditors so that we can get more revenue out of uh, corporate taxpayers. And it's been studied that more auditors produce more money, and it's, it's produce more money than they cost. Um, and the example that we were given was the state of Wisconsin, what we call the other Governor Walker. He recently hired about 100 auditors, and two of them actually came from Alaska. So when, in their budget, you know, he's cutting this and cutting this, and, and then he said, well, let's add some auditors because that will add to our bottom line. And, and that's just another example of, 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 a, of a smart move that's not necessarily cut, but will bring in more revenue. James Brooks from the Juno Empire. This one's for Representative Wool. Today in transportation, there's a committee substitute for the gas tax increase. Can you talk about where that's coming from, what the idea is behind the, these changes that you've got coming up? <clears throat> I think um, we're looking at some of the details. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the, the revenue from motor fuel goes to highways and roads, the revenue from aviation goes to airports, and the revenue from uh, marine goes to ports and in those areas so there wasn't it didn't all go into one fund so that marine tax wouldn't go into highways we wanted to keep it delineated a lot of the people that are supporting this tax want that as part of it you know the truckers come and say we don't mind paying more we want it to go to the roads so those kind of things are important for people to understand where their tax pennies or dollars or millions of dollars are going well, we had to clean up some of the language and really delineate it. We were told it did that, but then when you read the fine print, it didn't necessarily. Um, some of the some of the funds were going to different areas. Also, we um, we put in a proposal to have uh, it start one year, take a gap year, and then double uh, fifty percent again another year. So in, instead of going boom boom year after year, we took a year off. So it gives the industries a little time to adjust, to adjust their rates, and adjust to the increase. A tax bill that's moving kind of outside the main discussion with 111, 115. I mean, is this kind of moving on on its own? Sure. I, I think it's uh, last year we looked at a lot of small taxes, um, and this year this is I don't want to call it a small tax, but it, it's uh, it's not tied to income or PFD or any of that. So we're looking at. <clears throat> this was the fuel tax. We talked about it last year. We're the lowest in the nation. I think that it's one that needs to be looked at. And I do look at it as separate than uh, HB 111 or 115. Um, good morning. Matt Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, there are two proposals uh, from the minority coming before the uh, legislature budget subcommittee this evening. Um, one uh, would close the legislative lounge and the other would eliminate per diem for Juno legislators and wondering uh, if there's someone who can tell me what you guys think of those and if you don't think those are good ideas, why not? Uh, we're gonna look at every idea that put, gets put on the table. Uh, when we look at uh, the lounge, you know, I gotta say that uh, I, I do benefit from, from having that lounge service. It's nice to be able to uh, know that meals are gonna be, be available uh, when you were the busy schedules that we had I, mean, I just went through a, a, um, a day last week where um, it was almost impossible to to uh, um, Get a meal and fortunately I was able to um, Have something delivered to me, you know as I just kept continuing on from one 
meeting after another meeting after another meeting. Tuesdays and Thursdays are very busy days for me. I mean, I'm going, we're going to be um, going till <coughs> probably 7, 30, 8 o'clock tonight due to the fact that we have uh, state affairs. Uh, I'm not starting till, till 5, 30 tonight. So, um, and I got my committee that I'm chairing today. So it's just one moment after another moment after another moment. So that's a, um, a service that uh, isn't meant to be profitable. It's a service that's meant to keep us productive. Uh, when it comes to uh, the, the um, per diem, if uh, the, there's going to be any cuts to the per diem of the Juno um, legislators, then I would say that we might want to consider uh, doing something for other legislators do as well, probably by the same amount, because one of the points that has been made by the Juno um, representatives is that they are away from their jobs while they are here in this 90-day session. So it's hard for them to, to have those uh, revenues um, being able to sustain their families and everything else while they're here working in Juno, and uh, and I understand that. I understand that that's that was one of the reasons why that they still got a per diem um, when they restructured everything was because uh, people are still in this building, um, and uh, we this is a civilian citizen legislature. We still got to be able to provide for ourselves. Otherwise, all you're going to end up having down here is uh, a wealthy retiree people that can uh, serve in the legislature and look at the diversification that we have here today. We have um, younger people. Um, this last election brought in um, Representative Grin. Um, we've got uh, Representative Tar. you know, just some of the younger people that are here. And I think that that's the variety that Alaska hopes to have serving the legislature when you are a, a citizen legislature and not a professional legislature. Is there, is there a reason you couldn't uh, like order a pizza from Domino's instead of ordering from the lounge? Uh, you're not going to get, uh, uh, you could order from Domino's, I suppose so, if that's what you want to feed people all day long. Yes, Representative Figuera. Thanks. Now, the, I mean, the questions are fair, but we have a $3 billion budget deficit, and now we're talking about, a, you know, we're talking about thousands of dollars now. Um, and uh, reform in any of those areas definitely should be things that are being discussed. Representative Ledoux in instituted a $100 fee for people who want to use the lounge. Um, um, and uh, uh, there are a number of legislators, depending on their work ethic, who are here at 7 in the morning. I was here till 10 last night, um, who, who are working nonstop. Their, uh, people's work ethics are all different in this building. Um, but th those are all fair questions for reform. Uh, but if we spend our time studying things worth thousands of dollars when we have a $3 billion budget deficit, then we're just playing soundbite politics, and we need to solve the $3 billion budget deficit. Uh, certainly, I don't believe in excessive travel. We're crimping down on that. Uh, I don't believe in um, uh, uh, some of the more lavish things the former majority did, uh, the extra staff they had, the very high-paid staff some of them had, so we've cut that budget. Um, and, but uh, those are all worth looking at but they don't get you to $3 billion. So uh, the stuff that might be interesting on a headline doesn't solve the budget deficit. What solves the budget deficit is coming with, up with something that solves a $3 billion problem. I'm sure you can make money charging us to go to the bathroom, but I'm, I, I appreciate the facilities that we have that uh, allows me to function during the day. Liz Rains with KTVA. I've got uh, two questions. The American Cancer Society has a group here today that's uh, advocating for a smoke-free workplace. Bill, um, Senator Michiki has that bill in the Senate. It passed the Senate last year, but it ended up getting rolled in with another bill uh, at the end of session and didn't pass the House. Do you think that that bill on its own could pass the House this year, even amid all of the fiscal discussion? And um, last year, the governor also introduced a hike in tobacco taxes as part of his fiscal plan. Um, is that worthy of discussion again this year as part of the fiscal solution? <coughs> well, we looked at that bill in, in uh Health and Social Services last year passed out of that committee. Um, obviously, there's some details about it that need to be worked out, but I think overall it's a good bill, and I, I, would, I would imagine we're going to look at it again. As far as the taxes go on tobacco and what's next is going to be alcohol, I'm sure. Uh, I, I personally I feel those taxes were pretty much the highest in the nation, and I know there's some people that think the more we tax it, the less it'll be abused, and I'm not sure that there's really a correlation for that. I'd rather look at motor fuel tax, where we're the lowest in the nation, and try to bring those up a little bit, which brings in a lot of money. Um, also, I've heard from people over the years, it's, instead of going after all these tax, 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 all these 
20 little individual items. Some people would just rather be taxed once, you know, just pay an income tax or, or you know, restructure our dividend, do something large and, and all at once instead of nickel and diming every little thing, you know, whether it's a cigarette tax or, or a license fee, a business license fee or a DEC fee or any of these licensing fees, they're all going up all across the board. And for myself, who's a small business owner that has to pay a lot of fees, after a while it's exhausting. Every little fee that you do is doubling and, and you know, man, just, just, let's just take care of it in one bigger, bigger way than all these uh, little bites. Andrew Kitchman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Um, was there anything that you heard in public testimony for the Finance Committee members, anything that you heard in public testimony on uh, SB 115 that is leading to potential uh, amendments or changes? We did hear uh, quite a bit of testimony. I think we started uh, on that particular day last Friday at 1, uh, 1.30, and I don't think we got out of there until around a quarter to 7. The, the testimony was diverse. Uh, I would say that there was um, concern expressed about the income tax. There was certainly concern expressed about uh, you know, permanent fund restructuring, but there was also support uh, from many residents across the state um, saying that they recognized uh, we're in a different situation and that we needed to create an environment of certainty um, and that we would be doing the state the most service from some people's perspective if we uh, eliminated the uncertainty and let everybody know what the plan was going to be and what we were going to move forward with. Um, so um, that in itself came with testimony that they say they recognize that that might mean an income tax or it might mean a sales tax. And while nobody, including myself, would be happy about that, what it would do um, if we were to pass something like 115 uh, would be it would eliminate the uncertainty, it would allow schools, it would allow business, it would allow, uh, you know, the state overall to go forward knowing uh, that we have a plan, that we're going to address the situation. It would probably bring uh, positive impacts to our, our bond rating, which has gone down in, in uh, recent years. Uh, so, and that, that would save the state money if we get an improved bond rating. So, um, while nobody is jumping at the chance uh, of paying an income tax or paying a sales tax, nobody's excited about that. There are people out there, a good number of people out there, uh, that recognize that it very well might be uh, what we need to do in order to serve the best interests of the state of Alaska overall and, and to eliminate that uncertainty. President Gere. Yeah. Um, Andrew, there was a really interesting testimony from a construction contractor from Anchorage. He said that in, in this recession, he has people who used to be clients, business clients, who are not ordering work anymore, who are putting work on hold because we're in a recession and they don't know if this legislature is going to do anything to get us out of the recession. The business community is hurting. I mean, I'll just anecdotally, um, even though it's not the most important thing in the world, attendance at Anchorage Aces games is down a thousand, a thousand people per game. Now, what does that mean? It's a professional hockey team. Some people go. It means the economy has slowed down. And the owners of that hockey team are thinking about closing up shop. Uh, not the biggest thing in the world, but a signal, sort of the, the canary in, in the coal mine, uh, that this recession is not good for jobs. It's not good for the economy. And so what the construction contractor said is, until you do something about your deficit, a $3 billion deficit, my business is going to suffer. And businesses in Anchorage are going to suffer. And people are going to lose jobs. 9,000 jobs last year, um, and if you want to go with that proposal of some in the Senate of cutting another billion dollars, that's another 10 or 15,000 lost jobs and a recession that, lo that lasts a decade, and that's what the contractor was talking about. If the state's plan is to just kill jobs, then he's not sure what the business climate's going to be like in the future, and he knows that his business is going to keep going down. So I think that was the most interesting testimony. In terms of other testimony, look, uh, some of us b believe in a bigger dividend. Um, uh, we have 40 legislators who are probably all over the place. Um, but, uh, um, you know, we have to remember, uh, I know some people in this building have switched roles, but 
Uh, Minority Leader Sharice Millett had a permanent fund dividend plan that would have cut the dividend to $1,000. Now, is that a good idea? Representative Millett can tell you why she believes a $1,000 dividend is the right amount. I think that's too small. Um, and then the governor, uh, had uh, he did his veto, so last year's dividend was 1020 The Senate uh, Republicans passed a bill for a $1,000 dividend. Um, I hope I hope we don't start playing games in this building where people who had a position last year changed just because the makeup of the legislature has changed. But Representative Millett, Representative Hawker, their dividend actually would have gone down to less than $1,000 under projected prices in future years. I think we can do better than that. All right, that's all the time that we have for today. Thanks for attending our um, press availability for the Alaska House Majority Coalition. Thank you so much. <laughs>